Hey guys, so this is, uh, I guess, the part two continuation of the whole clownfish breeding series. Uh, this is the Rotifer section. So my last video you saw, I was growing the Fido, how I did it, what I started with, the algae paste that you can buy off Florida Aqua Farms. Um, I upgraded to two gallons now because I grow a lot more Rotifers and, um, you know, it's a high demand for Rotifers. Um, basically for Rotifers, you got two options. It's what I would recommend is just natural phytoplankton or um, reeds, uh, Mary Magriculture. Uh, he has a, what's basically an algae paste, which is a super, super, super concentrated um, green water, basically. It comes in like a, a bag and it's a liter. The only thing is it's about with shipping it comes to almost about seventy dollars for a liter i believe but it does last you a long time uh if you don't want to do that route and you just want the basically one time fee of rotifers and just keep growing it i feel like the natural way is better but reeds is really really good food i have used it before um it's awesome um, there's another, I, if you search eBay, there's another called, uh, add a D N U P add an up or something. They make a food, but I really don't like it. Um, fouls the water really bad. Um, you know, they sell like, I think four, eight and 16 ounce bottles, but, um, I was using it. Um, I just didn't like the results. Rotifers always died. The it leaves the water yellow and murky and it just stinks and I, I wasn't liking having to put that with the the clownfish or the coral so um i just decided to go natural now um i was using reeds before like i said awesome results uh it's just pretty expensive when you can do this stuff at home um so pretty much i have here is the four gallons of rotifers that i grow um, and then I have two liter uh, bottle right here. It's behind this. Uh, as you can see here, it's just a brine shrimp hatchery. I just do it to have a backup. You never know something might crash or something. So it's always good just to have a little backup, you know, nothing can harm that. And um, you just add the rotifer, for, uh, I mean, the phytoplankton as normal and feed and pretty much that's it um so here's my little gallon bucket i use and here is my rotter for sieve so this is a sieve where you can literally it has a micro mesh in it so it lets the water pass through but not the rotter first so this is great if you're feeding clownfish basically you don't have to like put the water in with the clowns you can just get the rotter first from here and then just put it directly to the tank um, also too I like to make ice cubes with if I'm not having breeding any clowns at the moment um, or I just put it into the main tank the coral tank and when it's feeding time and all the corals like you know they start eating the rotter first so it's a lot of uses for this I would highly recommend it uh, another product I got off of Florida aqua farms uh, they use like a 53 mesh on it and just like kind of like pvc type stuff and basically the water passes through and the rotter first stay so you'll see in the video basically what it comes to that it'll kind of be green at the bottom and it's literally the culture of all the rotter first um so from here what i do is i got my bucket got my little container to kind of measure out um usually what you want to do for cultures is take about 25 percent of the water out and replace it so in this case this big guy this is about a four gallon so what i'm gonna do is literally take out about a gallon worth and put it into this bucket so here's one here's two also, um, at least once a week, I give this bucket a thorough cleaning. Um, 
basically you know just transfer from one bucket to another get the rod of furs like all in a new bucket just because you see you'll start to get slime around the rim and slime at the bottom so I just want to ensure I get the freshest culture and you know it's not fouling the water like the like I said that I was using that adding up I think they call it a rotty reef or something but it's just horrible in the long run um, I just really wouldn't recommend that so I've got my gallon here and then I take about uh, 16 ounces or so out of the other guy. So as you can see, my brine shrimp hatchery, I've got the Rotifers there too. And then what I do is I try to tip it over really nice, but um, I just pretty much will siphon it out from here. So it does take a little bit, but I don't like to move this stuff too much. So, but as you can see, I'm just siphoning the water from here through this tube to this container. Um, also, we're gonna try to get a good look at basically the amount of rotifers I get. Um, you can see it's a really good culture. Again, I just do this for safety, you know, forbid something happens to my main culture and it crashes or something or I forget to feed or overpopulates at least I have a backup to like hey like just to start over and I'm not going crazy um, so this is gonna take a little bit but I'm just gonna keep it right here let it drain out um, so what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna take the gallon that I got here. This is my gallon. I'm gonna pour the other stuff there into here. And then we're gonna siphon into here. You're gonna see all the rotifers basically collect in the bottom. When they collect in the bottom, you're gonna, that's where it's up to you what to do. So like if I had a fry tank, I would just kinda go like push them all towards one corner, kinda dip it in there and just let it flow out. Um, if I have a container, um, I do sell my own rotifers online, uh, 16 ounce bags. So uh, if I have an order or something, I'll make a couple bags, get them out shipping. So again, so my rotifers never really go to waste because I'm using them for something at all times. Um, so here's like one of my pair of clowns while we're waiting for that to finish. Uh, it's just an onyx and a regular percula. Um, we're gonna, it's feeding time. So I like to switch food in there. Um, I use what's called Fertility Frenzy by Larry's Reef Services great food uh, it's basically to promote breeding of clownfish they love the food as you can tell they go crazy for it uh, I just really like it simplicity frozen cubes clownfish eat it um, and they get crazy cultures uh, clutches out of it when I first started I was just feeding different frozen foods and then um, I came across this product I liked it um, and then my clutch sizes were going from like nickel to half dollar because they were producing so much eggs um, but yeah they really like the food and it's really easy it comes in a flat pack it is a little bit on the expensive side but it's still a great product to use all right so as you can see we're draining here I've got about the water that I want to take out so I'm going to go ahead and stop the siphon and continue the rest of the video in the kitchen. All right. So I've got my gallon here. 
my 16 ounces here. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but if we get a good picture in the light, you can pretty much see all the little dots in there. And every little dot is a rotifer. So I've got a lot growing in there. Um, but you'll basically get to see it more when I siphon it here. So what I'm going to do is literally here, I'm going to pour this into there because I'm not going to really use that water. I am going to save a little bit of it with the big guy, but you'll see. So here we go. We're going to start pouring into there. Oops. Alright, so I got a little bit of water there. So I'm just kind of save this to make a bottle. And then we're just going to pour the remainder out. So there's some of the gunk on the bottom. I don't like to do that too much. So I just try to get it to where the stringy stuff doesn't come. But that's all just the live phyto. So when you do that, again, this was a gallon, a uh, gallon and 16 ounces. So that's about 144 ounces, I believe. So as you can see already, like I've got this kind of cluster thing at the bottom. So that's basically all live rotifers, like all just sitting there at the bottom. So I have the syringe that what I do is I grab some water and I just basically aim at the top kind of like in this motion so it makes kind of like a waterfall as you can see and it kind of pushes them all in this corner so you can see all the rotifers that are in there so because this is um, something I'm gonna save I'm gonna literally kind of just pour it in there because again like I said um, I don't let my rotifers go to waste, so if I have eggs breeding, this would go straight into the tank. Um, because I don't have eggs currently, they're um, about to lay within the next day or two, usually on their schedule. So I just kind of do that. Again, so if I had a reef tank, get them in the corner, pour into the tank. Uh, fry tank, same thing, get them in the corner kind of just squiggle it in there so then I like to wash so I don't accumulate the screen so it doesn't get dirty or anything and that's about it there's pretty much again we're gonna try to get a good picture there is a couple millions worth of rotifers in there as you can see every little dot in there is just live rotifers so I get this crazy amount just from a gallon. And so now we're just going to continue back to where we originally started to where we kind of put them, put, replenish the water, put the food, what kind of color we like to look for and that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now we're at the part where we're going to replenish the water. Um, put food and then we pretty much do the same process the next day um, so if you're starting with a small culture so like like I said sometimes you can buy a 16 ounce um, like I'll send you the link to basically the culture I sell so let's say for instance this is your culture you got this in the mail this is what you got to start with so now what you would do is add water and add food for the first couple days you're not going to touch it because you want them to replenish but in my instance this is just an everyday process once you pass that period once you pass like the initial you got them first time you put food you, i usually don't touch them for two maybe three days uh little guy two days big guy three days um just because you want this to get full of rotter first. So I got my bucky here that I make my own salt water. 
Um, so I took a gallon out. I'm going to put a gallon back. Um, it's a little under a gallon right there. So what I'm going to do is just literally pour it back. And then obviously the water gets lighter. So this is the phytoplankton that I grow at home. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is usually, I do about 16 ounces within two days between this bucket and the little guy. So um, pretty much what I'm gonna do is just pour it in there. I like to get a nice color, green. You never want it to go clear. When it goes clear, your rotifers are starving. And you starve them too long, they're gonna die out on you. So you don't want them to get any time, you don't want the color to go too light. In this instance, um, my Fido is usually a little bit darker. Um, this one I had to go on vacation, so it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna just go ahead and be super generous with it and pour the rest. I'll probably grab more just because I have storage um, because I definitely like to make sure that you get a nice green tint to it and your rotifers are not starving. So I put this guy back here, put his little aerator. So here um, I built, not built, I got a, like, a rigged tubing and I bent it into this shape. That way it hooks onto the bucket and it just kind of creates an airflow. Um, as you can see, I kind of just clean this, just get the gunk off, just pour it back. And that's kind of like the, um, the uh, bubble rate you kind of want to go at, not too strong where it's foaming because if it starts to foam, you'll get a rim of basically all your rotifers here because you're skimming them kind of out of the water. So I recommend bubbles. Same thing with Fido, bubbles are the best. Um, tubing just tends to, I mean, air stones tend to skim the water after a while, which is what you don't want. Um, so the other guy, we have to add water back, same as this guy. So we're gonna add some water here. It gets clear, so I leave room for me to add phytoplankton. And pretty much that's it. So I'll send, again, in the comments below, I'm gonna go put um, the link to the phytoplankton video, the link to how to start your phyto, the link to where to buy rotifers. In this case, it would be uh, my eBay page. Um, there's other places you can buy, but I think pretty cheap for a live culture, um, you know. And um, pretty much after you get to this point, it's just an everyday process to do it. So like I said, I'm gonna put those that rotifers that we got into this bottle and then you'll see a little short video of uh, just basically what it kind of looks like in case the uh, video recording wasn't that good um, so I'm gonna take the label off and you're just gonna see what it looks like basically with all the little dots in there so any questions comments let me know in the uh, comments below or don't forget to subscribe I answer pretty much all the messages I get um, so pretty friendly and have no problem helping you guys. Later.